Hey YouTube, my name is Bill and uh, this is uh, kind of how to play the first part of a fire dance from the Broadway musical River Dance. Um, you know, it's that Celtic thing with the Irish dancing. This is where the flamenco dancer meets the Irish dancers. It's really, really cool, one of my favorite songs. So we're going to break this down into a couple different parts. This is just the intro, um, what you just heard. And, um, you know, we're going to break that down and you'll see other videos uh, where I'll do the other parts and, and kind of put that out there. Um, one thing, buy the song, it's 99 cents. You know, go up to iTunes, um, you know, whatever. Um, download it, it's 99 cents, honor the copyright owner. Um, you know, they created a beautiful song and it's absolutely worth that much. So, enough said there. Um, anyway, this part's going to cover, um, you know, the intro section. Uh, the second video is going to cover that rhythm that you hear in the center section where the cast and are going. That's kind of the hard part that'll kind of screw you up because it constantly shifts back and forth in meter. And then part three is going to be the main guitar part. Um, you know, that's in that odd meter. So first of all, the key center is an E minor, okay? Most of the intro is based upon portions of first position chords you already know. Chords like E minor, you know, D, G, C, A minor 7th. I mean, super, super simple stuff, okay? It's just that not all the chord is played in every single case. Sometimes it's a portion of the chord, and sometimes there's extra color being played. So for example, you might hear a chord like this, which is a G chord with a D, and played from the B kind of up. You might see a G with the A in there, like that, you know, but basically if you visualize these chords as you're playing through it, that's how I find it easier to remember, you know, exactly, make sure my finger's in the right position. There's also some non-scale chords, um, sort of outside of the E minor scale. One of them is A flat sixth, and we'll go over this later, but that chord there. There's E7, um, probably played in a, in a way that you haven't seen before, or not, you've seen it, but it's probably not a common way to play it where you go, for example, from that G, we'll go through that, and then there's also the, the E7 sus at the very end before you go into that section. Okay, so that's what we're going to cover. Um, on the picking side, it's kind of a classical or flamenco kind of thing, thumb, three fingers. Um, I'm not a classical guitar player, and I'm sure as heck not a flamenco player, although after playing this, I really would like to learn it. Um, it helps if you have nails. I really don't. Um, I have just barely here. You can sort of hear it if I dig a little bit, okay, but it helps if you have nails. Um, there's also a lot of arpeggiated voicings. What I mean by that is, you know, you don't actually just play the chords with all fingers hitting it at once. You sort of roll them, starting with the thumb and then down, kind of like this. Um, let's give an example. Like that. You know, that kind of thing. And um, so, anyway, let's do it. So the first part is basically going from E minor to D. Okay? Except instead of playing the full E minor chord like that, it's just playing the E note and the G, and you go. And then it goes, bass goes to the D. And then you pull off the G to the F. So it's. Okay? Now you'll see some of the videos, some people play it like this. Like that. Um, I've seen both. Um, if you go on YouTube and you look at the actual uh, production, um, different guitar players play it differently. My sense is the score probably gives a lot of liberty to the player in terms of what they're doing. But anyway, I play it this way. Okay, and then you don't forget this is the D chord, right? So E minor. Okay, now you're going to go to that G with the B bass, right? So there's the G chord, but you're playing this part of it. And then you're going to keep that D in the pinky, you're going to play the C. And catch the E up top. So you got the two of them together. So it's... Okay, one more time. E, D, G, now C with that D. Okay, that D in the pinky. And now you hit the A and you're going to hit a G chord. Okay, so think of a G chord but move that second finger over to the A in the third string. And you're arpeggiating. Okay? The end of the section, or this small section, is A minor, where you're playing like an A minor 7th, like that. But then you're taking off your finger to get that B in there, which would be the second. So it's like an A minor... It's an A minor 7th, add 2, I guess. Okay? So it goes... One more time for the fingers on the right hand side. 
arpeggiated. Sorry. So sometimes I'm doing the three, sometimes I'm doing the four. You can tell when you hear that high string, I'm usually hitting the fourth finger there, the, the ring finger. So that was three fingers. Here comes four. Now hit the A and get the G chord. Okay, and then you hear the open E and then a harmonic on the second string at the 12th fret. Okay, so that section is... Okay, the next part is almost exactly the same, it's just the last chord that's different. So you go all the way through. This is where we go to that D chord like this, oh, sorry, the E chord. And let me show you how to play that. If you think about a D chord, you'd normally play it like this, right? D chord and open. Play it now with these fingers, and imagine that you have a finger on the open D. Slide it up two frets to make it the E. Okay? Now you don't need this top string, but you do want that, that uh, G sharp in the bass for the, for the E chord. So, so you just shift your fingers. So in other words, where you had this, Move this finger down to the G sharp, move this finger to the B. Okay, so you're going. Sorry. Okay, so the second time you play it goes. Okay, so all the way through to that part so far. section, if you listen to it really closely, the flamenco player is playing it probably with three fingers where everything is picked. I, I don't know how to do that yet. Um, I'm more of a rock, jazz, blues player, so I'm doing more of a hammer-on kind of thing. I hit the B, you go to the D, that's basically what you're playing, except so you're pulling off you can pick the first two. So then if you pick the first two, it would be then pull off there. So I got So you just hit the A note and then an A minor chord arpeggiated for the E, the A, and the C. Now you arpeggiate the A again, the A minor, except with the B. chord, just an F bar chord, and now you play up the F, A, B, so, so it's very loose and very kind of free rubato um, kind of feel to it, so. This is where you're just playing a C with the G in the bass. And, and you gotta come off that G in the bass to be able to get that D up here. So. Then you go to the A flat 6. And you just hold that. And then, see this, the C note? and then slide up to get the D and hit the C together with it on the third string, fifth fret. Okay, so that part goes... Uh, 
notes. Okay, think about an E chord, right? You play an E7, here's an E, here's an E7, and the sus4, which is the A, so it looks like that. And you just arpeggiate that. And that's it. Okay, so if you play the whole thing. that twice. I mean there's another part above it. We'll do that some other time. Um, so when we get to the next video what you're gonna learn or what I'm gonna try to show is the um, is the rhythm. Um, the rhythm in the main section when the castanets kind of keep shifting between like two bars of seven and one bar of six or I guess you could think about it as two bars of three. Anyway um, just to give you a little preview um, what you're gonna learn there um, is just that rhythm so that it's kind of ingrained in your head because the actual guitar part's not very difficult, but the rhythm that it's playing against, that kind of constantly shifting meter is what will screw you up. So that's basically, uh, next video we're going to learn how to do this. That's it. Thanks guys.